Vatican City have its own special money? Money, Vatican City? Yes, but it only comes in one denomination, Catholic. Mm. <laughs> Can't act. Slightly bald. Can dance a little. It's either Fred Astaire or, uh, or Betty Davis. <laughs> The Hollywood Squares, Tuesday at 7.30, followed by Happy Days here on Channel 4. Channel 4, Pittsburgh. From Channel 4, the tri-state area's leading news station, this is Action News. Good evening. Considering the state of our roads here in western Pennsylvania, what happened on the parkway today was probably inevitable. Potholes triggered a chain reaction on the parkway east this afternoon involving four cars and a busload of students from North Braddock. Kathy Milton was there. About 4 o'clock, our Channel 4 newsroom got a call that there had been an accident up here on the parkway about 500 feet from the station. It involved a school bus and four cars. What could easily have been a tragedy was averted by the mercy of God. Uh, well, I'm going down the road this way, and uh, this green car here, he's, uh, he's traveling in front of me, and I guess because of these potholes, there was another car in front of him, and he slowed down. And uh, this car here, he started sliding. His back end went way over in that lane. And this car here hit into him. The yellow car. Yeah, right. That yellow car hit into him. And then I had no choice. I had to slam on my brakes, and I hit into the back of them. And that's how it ended up. I wish they'd fix these potholes. You seem to be limping. drainage isn't real good either. But, uh, you seem to be limping a bit. Were you hurt? I just hurt my knee a little bit, I think. So you really don't know what happened? Did you see the accident occurring? Oh, yeah. The guy tried to stop, and when he did, he slid. His car went sideways. He came right into the outside lane, and uh, right in front of me, you know, and I had no place to go. I hit him. Obviously, the two cars that triggered the chain accident were unaware of what happened or just didn't wish to be involved. According to Cox, they left the scene, leaving behind one injured motorist, 55-year-old George Brooks of Penn Hills, who's been taken to Columbia Hospital with a possible fractured leg. Bob Cox himself sustained slight injuries to his leg, but refused medication. As for the students from Braddock and North Braddock on their way home from Forbes Trail, they'll have an adventure to relate to their classmates tomorrow. What could have been a tale of tragedy caused by dangerous potholes and horrible road conditions ended today on a lucky note. The next time may be different. Kathy Milton, Channel 4 Action News. And we'll have more about the pothole problem a bit later tonight on Action News. There was a second accident today involving a school bus in Westmoreland County. A minibus overturned on Route 130 near the Westmoreland County Fairgrounds. The students on board were taken to the hospital for checkups, but luckily no serious injuries were reported. Some serious allegations, though, today from Western Penitentiary. The charges center on claims that several guards abused two inmates. Mike Schneider uncovered. That story kind of interesting, too. It could be a big story, Don, but nobody's saying at this point. The prisons, of course, are a very tough place to be, and allegations of brutality there are nothing new at all. Prisoners often claim that guards manhandled them. Most of the time, those problems really don't exist, or they are handled internally. But this time, the state police were called in to investigate. About six Western Penn inmates were discovered, apparently trying to escape from the north cell block. Instead of simply returning all of the prisoners to their cells, our sources say the guards handcuffed two of the smaller men, took them to the maximum security area, and then beat them with clubs. The beatings raised welts on Jeffrey Cota and Clarence Fierro. Welts so severe that Cota's mother was shocked when she visited her son the next day. Her complaints triggered a state police investigation, an investigation which has been quietly conducted. We found out about it today. We came to the Washington Boulevard barracks of the Pennsylvania State Police to try to confirm several aspects of our story. We talked with a Corporal Frank Wise, who was not available to go before our cameras, but did admit that, yes, an investigation is taking place. Yes, it involves four to six guards and the allegations of two inmates. He said the investigation itself is not that unusual, and he admitted that it will be concluded sometime before the end of the week. West Penn Warden Jim Howard also confirmed an investigation is underway, but he refused to identify the guards being probed. Our sources say Jerry Repchak, Mike Halloran, and Frank Browniak are three of the men. Another guard reported the beatings after the others allegedly tried to cover it up. 
Obviously, West Penn is no kindergarten, and sometimes the guards do have to get tough. Many times they are attacked by the inmates, and not long ago, one guard was indeed killed. But Don, if these allegations are true, then it appears six to eight guards possibly were involved in the same type of crimes that some of the inmates are jailed for, and I guess it's something the state police will try to determine. Did they say how long the investigation might take? They expect the end of the week to have some sort of conclusion, but they're not saying exactly what they expect that to be. Okay, Mike, thank you. We'll be watching for that, Paul. And if potholes are not enough... Uh to uh, concern you, maybe gasoline rationing will make you stop and think. President Carter is asking Congress for authority to order coupon-type gasoline rationing and other mandatory conservation measures for use in severe emergencies. Deborah Fox is with our live action cam and reports on motorist reaction. Debbie? Well, Paul, I might add that the people around here don't like that plan at all. They don't like that prospect either. But Carter will go before Congress and ask them for the authority to institute gasoline rationing plus the closing of gasoline stations on weekends. Now, this is only in the v event of a serious energy emergency. Again, it's only a contingency plan. Now, we talked to some of the people down here this afternoon, and here's what they have to say. If it would be shown to the public that there was definitely this problem would really exist, they would come out with uh, some absolute hard facts that would prove it, uh, then I could, I could understand it, but I really wouldn't be in favor of it. Well, gas rationing could affect me because I'm on the road a lot in sales and manufacturers rep, and uh, that could have an effect on earning an income. Uh, I really haven't thought much about uh, closing the stations on Saturday or Sunday. It would affect that would have on me as far as earning a living, none, because normally I put in a five-day week. First of all, if it happens, I'm not going to be driving on weekends anyhow. I won't be able to afford to gas drive, so I don't know. I'm not going to do much gas driving think if it happens. My question is, is it as really as critical as we're made to believe? This is what I wonder. Convince me of that, and then maybe, you know, I could tell you better how I feel about rationing. What do you think about gas rationing? Well, I don't really like the idea too much at all myself, but if that's the way the president wants to go about cutting our fuel consumption, I guess that's the way we'll just have to do it. The president can put the standby plan into effect when he declares that state of energy emergency. Now today, Energy Secretary Schlesinger assured the nation's governors that this will only be done as a last resort. Paul? Okay, Debbie, I guess we'll just have to buy a horse <laughs> to get to work in time. Probably the best idea. I'll be seeing you on the pothole route. I got a couple of horses. It's not a good idea, believe me. <laughs> it's expensive. Thank you, Paul. Some additional forces are banding together to battle the potholes, and we've got lots of them. A new group called Pothole Victims of Pennsylvania. They held their first news conference today, and Carol Hall has details. Dr. Martin Krauss is the man who has led the East Street Valley Expressway fight and has now pulled together more troops in the war against potholes. They include citizens, civic, and environmental organizations united to battle the craters we hate. Dr. Krauss said everyone has a pothole tale to tell. Dr. Krauss joined the fight Saturday night after he hit what he terms a booby trap on the battlefield of Monroeville. His right front tire went flat and he lost two hubcaps after he hit a pothole here on this bridge near Ted McWilliams Auto Dealership. To avoid being hit and to change the tire, he pulled into the parking area at the dealership where he found five other motorists doing the same thing. Pothole victims in Pennsylvania believe that whatever highway funds are available must be spent for maintenance and repair and not on new highways. That's a position they'll take to Harrisburg. The taxpayers of Pennsylvania would be outraged uh, if they saw new highway construction starting before the other roads and bridges are maintained. I, I, I know I would be infuriated and I know I might get violent. I don't know. And I think, I, I just don't think it makes sense. Frank Trimarchi runs a school bus company and cited the dangers and damages there from potholes. The danger is tremendous because uh, when you hit a pothole and you twist the back end of that bus by a broken center bolt, broken springs, the possibility of that bus is turning over about 90 percent. If the bus driver is going exceeding too much speed for that pothole, he's going to uh, tip that bus over and there's 60 ki six kids involved with the safety. Back to that pothole in Monroeville that booby-trapped Krause's tire. It is still attacking. 
This victim only lost her hubcap, but was safely able to retrieve it. She, too, may join the fight. Carol Hall, Channel 4 Action News. The Thornburg Bridge, which carries Route 30 over Chartier's Creek between Crafton and Thornburg, will be closed again tomorrow for pothole repairs to the bridge surface. Crews will be working between the hours of 9.30 a.m. and 3 p.m. The potholes are described as among the worst in the area, although motorists in other parts of the town have their own particular favorites. In Harrisburg today, the state senate approved an amendment that would provide $10 million in the current fiscal year for so-called instant pothole repair. Now, some experts say it'll take about $200 million instead. The lawmakers also approved a bill that would legalize studded snow tires once again next winter. That measure must still pass the House and faces a sure veto from Governor Thornburg. 54-year-old Vincent Persano of Rochester was killed today in a three-car accident on Route 65 in Beaver County. Persano was better known as Vinnie Vincent, a well-known band leader in the area. Police say Vincent was killed when he tried to avoid another car which pulled out of, an, of a side street. He was struck in the rear, spun into the opposite lane, and then struck broadside by a third car. More testimony today on the move to subpoena coroner Cyril Weck's financial records. We'll have that story when Action News continues. Sure smells good. There's plenty. Come on. Anyone who insists on fresh, wholesome food knows where to find Bob Evans Farm Sausage. Because we do it right, or we don't do it. Bob Evans Pork Sausage gets its healthy pink look from fresh, lean meat, not colorings or preservatives. You sure do a breakfast up right. Henry, you buttering me up. Down the farm, we do it right, or we don't do it. Southwest Bank has a beautiful arrangement for you. Deposit $50 in a new or existing savings account, and you'll get a free place setting of Dalton Fine China or Durable Stoneware. And every time you deposit $25, you can buy another setting or accessory piece at a very special price. How's it going? That's the bank. I thought you were going to wait. How do you like this? Hey, so you got the stoneware. I like the wildflower china myself. A beautiful arrangement from Southwest Bank, member FDIC. The hearing to determine whether or not Controller Jack Lynch will be allowed to subpoena all of Coroner Weck's records was recessed today after only 45 minutes due to the absence of Dr. Weck. Weck was out of town today, but he'll be in the witness stand when the hearings resume tomorrow. The story from Stu Emery. The hearing before Judge John Flaherty will determine whether a subpoena issued by Controller Jack Lynch demanding access to all of Coroner Weck's records will be allowed to stand. So far, it's been the controller's show, with two witnesses presenting the evidence they believe should persuade Judge Flaherty they are entitled to see every file and document in the coroner's office. On the witness stand today was Tom Price, the controller's chief auditor. Price said that he found files of Dr. Weck's professional education fund and private autopsies co-mingled with regular county morgue files. Under questioning of controller's attorney, Joe Grackmole, Price said that members of the coroner's staff kept them out of an office on the second floor that contained files they wanted to see, and then hustled them off to the third floor, a move Price said they made only reluctantly. A 1978 audit of the coroner's office was also produced. That audit criticized several procedures, including the failure to use pre-numbered checks or to keep track of incoming fees with a numerical system. Though Judge Flaherty need only rule on whether or not the subpoena should be quashed, his opinion will almost certainly touch on the real heart of the dispute, how much and what kind of moonlighting by county employees is legal and proper, and whether the subpoena would violate Coroner Weck's rights as a private citizen. Key testimony, of course, will come tomorrow when Coroner Weck finally takes the witness stand. At that time, he's expected to tell the court what he has already stated publicly, that in his opinion, the two funds were perfectly legal. He'll also state that the money that went into those funds was acquired by his staff and himself while working on their own time, and therefore, he says, money that was not subject to to the controller's audit. Stu Emery, Channel 4 Action News. Former State Senator Tom Nolan of Wilkins Township is being paid $1,250 by the Senate to act as a consultant to study the problems of aging in Pennsylvania. Ironically, very few lawmakers knew of the contract, including the man who succeeded Nolan as chairman of the Committee on Aging and Youth. But the Senate's president, Martin Murray, defended the contract, saying the expenditure will be fully justified. 
Welfare Secretary Helen O'Bannon urged the legislature today to act quickly to provide funds to make up a $31 million spending deficit for the Welfare Department and other departments of state government. She warned that if the money is not appropriated by March 6, Welfare Department workers will face payless paydays. The judge who presided at the bribery trial of Congressman Daniel Flood says there is evidence, clear evidence, of jury tampering. Flood's trial ended on February 3rd in a mistrial when one juror held out for acquittal. That lone holdout also told his fellow jurors that he had outside information about the case, information known only to a prosecution witness. Flood will be retried in April. Wall Street was a little nervous today. Soaring oil prices are quoted as the major factor, along with President Carter's suggestion for rationing. One broker compared the situation with the oil embargo of 1974. The Dow Jones Industrials were down 1412 to close at 807 even. The losers outnumbered the gainers by 10 to 1. The New York Stock Exchange Index showed a loss of 50 cents on average share. The volume today was 31,470,000 shares. Well, it's Eastern 8 tournament time for the Panthers, the Dukes, and the Mountaineers. And Bill Hillgrove has the story, next on Action News. I grew up on a farm. That's where I learned to make my delicious crabapple jelly. I learned another secret on the farm. Add grain to coffee for rich coffee taste without bitterness. Now Melrose found that secret. They start with three kinds of rich, robust coffees, then blend in roasted grain to take away the bitter edge for a delicious, full-flavored coffee taste. Ah, mm, just like back on the farm. Mellow Roast Coffee and Grain Beverage. Great coffee taste without bitterness. What's happening in Pittsburgh? Channel 4 can show you your town. show this Friday on AM Pittsburgh, History of Rock and Roll, a film version of American Pie, nostalgic look at the 50s, and live rock and roll stars. Friday on AM Pittsburgh. In sports, Myron Cope has a commentary on Pitt's Terry Knight and uh, lots of Eastern Aid activity tonight, Doctor. Yes, it's rug cutting time. I like the way you say that, big guy. Hey, listen, where did that come from anyhow, rug you? cutting time? You? Just that. Oh, oh really? You mean I coined a phrase. <laughs> Thank you very much. Plenty of tickets remain for tonight's Pitt-George-Washington game at the Pitt Fieldhouse. The Panthers will be trying to avenge an 11-point loss at GW early in January when the Colonials outmuscled and outscored the Panthers. I would really like to see what we can really do against them, Bill. I thought the first game that we played, uh, I think a lot was taken away from it, from the type of physical game that it was. There were a lot of fouls called, and with about a minute to go, uh, the fight erupted, and we were only four points down. So I, I'm really looking forward to it because I want to see what we can really do against GW in a situation like we're in tonight. Samson played exceedingly well against Pitt. Has he played any games like that since then? Well, I really feel that he came into his own during that time period, Bill, and he's been playing well since that time. I don't think he had 20, uh, he had 35 points and 17 rebounds against us. I don't think he accomplished that again, but he's been up there with about 15 rebounds, and he's been getting his 20 points, and he's just a very good basketball player. He's the kind of guy that comes out and works very hard and just does his job, and he fits in well with their front line at Glenn and Zagardo. Pitt's got its own pretty good front line, Sam Clancy, Sammy Ellis, and an unsung hero by the name of Terry Knight. Yeah, Terry Knight has really come along, Bill. I think you'll agree as the Pitt broadcaster, right? Absolutely. Terry Knight, uh, four years ago, signed with Pitt, of course, and at that time, a uh, few major colleges had been interested in him. The bird dog said, uh, Terry Knight, he's Billy's brother. That's all. Billy, of course, was the Pitt All-American who went on to become a big star in the pros. Anyhow, this season, it's Terry Knight's senior your season and he's blossomed remarkably. He's got a 15.2 scoring average. He's shooting 49% from the field. He's Pitt's best outside shooter and actually the pro scouts are starting to come around for a look. Tim Gergerich says Terry Knight has been his most improved player at Pitt in his tenure as head coach at Pitt. Terry plays forward. He almost surely would have to make it in the pros as a guard, but there's going to be a new wrinkle in tonight's game because Gergerich is planning to move him to center after the opening jump. Meantime, you can say that Terry Knight has come a long, long way from the time when the bird dog said, hey, he's Billy's brother, that's all. This is Myron Cope on sports.
Thank you, Myron. The Duquesne West Virginia rematch will draw the most attention in the league tonight due to the presence of B.B. Flannery in the Duquesne lineup. The junior co captain was not in Morgantown when the Mountaineers bombed Duquesne three weeks ago. Coach Mike Rice is hoping the Dukes can keep their thoughts on their number one priority, the NCAA playoffs. Indiana State is back on top of both college basketball polls this week. The 26-0 Sycamores received a wide margin from the UPI Board of Coaches, but a slim first place rating from the AP Media Poll. Notre Dame and UCLA were second and third on both polls. Although the Pens have slipped to third place because of the LA Kings' victory over Vancouver last night, they'll have a chance to regain the second spot if they can defeat Colorado at the arena tomorrow night. Penguin defenseman Randy Carlisle is on a scoring binge with two goals and ten assists in the last nine games. Carlisle says it's a matter of getting the shots. Well, I think I got lucky more than anything else. Uh, I've had a lot of shots lately in, say, the last three or four games. One game I had seven and uh, six, and I think the other night I had nine. So once you keep shooting the puck, well, something's got to break for you. And that's, I think it's just basically uh, just a lot of averages works out that way. When you work in practice like you did today, uh, what, what do you personally work on? Well, I found it tough sledding today. I don't know. Some days you have it, some days you don't. Uh, you just go out there and... It's tough getting warmed up in this rink. It's colder here than, uh, say, the Civic Arena. So you have to do more. You have to work a little harder at getting warmed up. But once you get warmed up, things seem to start to come together. And you, you, what I try to do is try to pick the corners, shooting the puck, and try to make the right right play all the time. I don't want to get any bad habits in practice because then you get bad habits in the game, and it can cost you. The weather cleared up at Bradenton today, so the Buckos had their best and most complete workout of spring training so far. Each of the Pirate pitchers tossed batting practice for 10 minutes. The rest of the squad is due to report on Thursday, and hurrah for Johnny Bench. He says that journeyman players in baseball make too much money, and he says that Pete Rose would not deserve $800,000 a year with the Reds. He doesn't know about the Phils. Okay. He doesn't like the salary structure in baseball. Maybe because he's not getting it. Well, he's getting a pretty good buy. Yeah, he's not starving. Not before. as well as you're doing. No food stamps for John Bench. Okay, big guy, thank you. Nan Chapman is calling for clearing skies, and she has the forecast next on Action News. Airport Toyota between the airport and Sewickley and Ted McWilliams Motor City Monroeville are working together to bring you Toyotas at a price. We don't just say it, we do it. Here's proof. On every Corolla with all available extras, you get $600 right off the sticker price. On every Celica with all available extras, you get $1,400 right off the sticker price. On every Toyota pickup with all extras, you get $800 right off the sticker price. Comparable savings on all Toyotas only at Ted McWilliams Motor City Monroeville and Airport Toyota between the airport and Sewickley. Question, who will win the Super Bowl? Answer, the team with the best preparation. Question, who will get the best job? Answer, the person with the best preparation. Where do you get the preparation? The Job Corps. Job Corps trains you in a skill that prepares you for that well-paying job. You can finish high school and even go on to college. How do you find out about Job Corps? Call your local Job Corps recruiter collect. What's the answer? Job Corps! <laughs> Well, that bright glare in the west is called sunshine. Ooh. Nan Chapman says it's <laughs> quite harmless. It won't hurt a bit. But better to see the potholes, my dear. Yes, so are they <laughs> potholes. Surely if we gang up on them, they'll do something about it. We had a low today of 27 degrees and a high of 40. Normals now are way up there, up to 24 and 40, and we're one and a half degrees above normal. Right now, 37 degrees, humidity 66%. Winds northwest now at 10 miles per hour, and the barometer is 30.09. That's rising, and on the pollution index, high station is downtown tonight with carbon monoxide. 163 is that reading, and that is unhealthful. Low station Logan's Ferry, they come in at 23 with particulates, and that's in the good range, so I guess that's a good place to be tonight. On the satellite map, Snow flurries up in northern New England, and you can see just right where they are. There is some snow up in the uh, northern plains and through the Dakotas down to Nebraska. South of that is rain through the central plains, a little bit of thunder shower activity in through Texas. And another good picture out in the Pacific Northwest of a little bit of rain. Snow in the higher elevations, of course. Now that temperatures are moderating in the southeast, that's good news, moderating. The James River in Virginia is having the worst flooding since 1972. James River, of course, is where 
uh, Richmond, Virginia is located, 13 feet above flood stage. So they're having quite a few problems there. Things warming up a little. Chicago got up to 40 degrees this afternoon. Columbia, Missouri, 52 degrees. And down in West Texas, they had temperatures in the mid-70s. Yuma, Arizona was 72 degrees this afternoon. So it's out there. It'll be coming in soon. Kansas, however, Nebraska, a little bit cold out there tonight. They're expecting uh, temperatures in the 20s and 30s, and they have cattle, cattlemen's advisories. Low temperature this morning was zero degrees at a couple of places in Michigan, one of which was Sault Ste. Marie, way up north, zero this morning. We had sunshine today, I'm sure you noticed it, and we'll have some sunshine tomorrow morning. That's because of high pressure, clearing things out. Next weather is way down here in Texas. This low is going to move eastward for a while, and then northeast, bringing us some rain on Thursday, but it'll stay warm. The cold weather and the snow will stay north of us. Chicago will get some more snow, but we'll just get rain. Denardo forecast for tonight, fair and cold, a low of 20 degrees. Wednesday, mostly sunny in the morning. It'll be a little bit cloudy and warmer in the afternoon, and we'll have a high of 44 degrees. Thursday, mostly cloudy and mild. We will have occasional rain, but the high will be 45 degrees, so we can stand that. Tonight, though, fair. Skies will be clear and 20 degrees. Wednesday, sunny in the morning, warmer in the afternoon. A pretty nice day tomorrow, 44. And Thursday, occasional rain up to about 45 degrees. Don't get carried away. I wouldn't want you to plant your petunias yet, but uh, right. things are looking up. They have cattle advisors in Nebraska, I assume. And Kansas, yes. Do you have any cows in Nebraska? <laughs> no, <laughs> but you know what? This is you better get them in the barn. I certainly <laughs> will. <laughs> but seriously, this, this is one of your favorite days. Yes, it is. This is Shrove Tuesday. Oh, yes, I've been looking for it. <laughs> I know that, and we all do. One tradition associated with Shrove Tuesday is, of course, the Mardi Gras. Another is that of eating pancakes. In fact, Shrove Tuesday is sometimes called Pancake Day. And that's right. another tradition that goes way back. All right. It seems that you couldn't eat eggs during Lent, and since people couldn't refrigerate their eggs and couldn't keep them, they baked them all up and used them, and the best way to do that was in pancakes. And so Shrove Tuesday came to be called Pancake Day. The word Shrove connotes penitence, the confession of sins and preparation for Lent. Ash Wednesday tomorrow begins the 40 days of Lent, symbolic of the 40 days Jesus spent in the desert and the 40 years that Israel wandered before entering the Promised Land. Lent is an important period for the church. It's a season of penance and preparation. It's a time when we really try to do a little extra penance, recognizing that we're all sinners and we try to do something about that. And when we begin what uh, has often been called sort of a solemn retreat in preparation for the greatest feast, the greatest of all Christian feasts, namely the death and resurrection of Jesus in Easter time. And the so today, Shrove Tuesday, is the last day for feasting. Tomorrow, Ash Wednesday, begins the fast of Lent. Time for penitence for followers of the Christian faith. Lynn Hines, Channel 4 Action News. Well, lately it seems nothing is really good for you. Cigarettes, coffee, uh, beer, and so forth. But a doctor in Australia may have gone too far. Dr. A. H. Rogers of the Adelaide Dental School in Australia says there is strong evidence that kissing causes tooth decay because, says the good doctor, bacteria is transmitted during the act of osculation. That's what the doctor says. Now, for those who cannot kick the habit or at least cut back, Dr. Roger says there is hope. He is working on a new project to find a new organism to fight the organism that causes tooth decay. The good doctor's no fun anymore. That's Action News at 6. I'm Don Cannon. Thank you, and stay tuned for the ABC World News tonight coming up next. Channel 4 Action News is a presentation of WTAE-TV News. If you need information on older people, employment, housing, marital problems, or community resources, call the Information and Referral Service at 261-6010. The makers of Robitussin cough medicine don't think you should let just our television commercial recommend your cough medicine. The fact is, there are different kinds of coughs. That's why...
Incredible, amazing Anders does it again. Famous midi shade suits and sport coats at huge discounts. Brand new shipments of famous midi shade three piece vested suits at our lowest price ever. Advertised in Gentlemen's Quarterly for much more than Anders $59.90. Midi shade sport coats and blazers unbeatable at $39.90. Our lowest price ever on expensive Kuppenheimer slacks $14.90. Famous labels for less at Anders. Anders, you never have to pay full retail price again. One week only, Giant Eagle cuts 20% off the price of beef. At a time when rising beef prices are increasing everyone's cost of living, Giant Eagle is taking strong measures to help keep beef on your table. We've cut prices 20% on every pot, chuck, and rump roast. 20% on every porterhouse, T-bone, sirloin, and Delmonico steak. It's all USDA choice blue ribbon quality beef, and it's all 20% off this week at Giant Eagle, bringing all the best to you. The makers of Robitussin cough medicine don't think you should let just our television commercial recommend your cough medicine. The fact is there are different kinds of coughs. That's why there are four different kinds of Robitussin cough medicine. When you have a cough due to colds or flu, be sure you get the right kind of medicine for your kind of cough. The makers of Robitussin ask you to ask your doctor or pharmacist. Channel 4, WTAE-TV, Pittsburgh. From Channel 4, the tri-state area's leading news station, this is Action News. President Carter has taken the cue from his energy secretary, Schlesinger, and called on the Congress to give him the authority to ration gasoline. Mr. Carter wants the power to close down gas stations on weekends, the power to order lower temperatures in public buildings, the power to shut off outdoor advertising signs. This would save a half million barrels of oil per day, according to the president. If it's absolutely necessary, then it probably should be done, although I do not favor it at the present time. Well, gas rationing could affect me because I'm on the road a lot in sales and manufacturers rep, and uh, that could have an effect on earning an income. If it would be shown to the public that there was definitely this problem would really exist, they could come out with uh, some absolute hard facts that would prove it, uh, then I could, I could understand it, but I really wouldn't be in favor of it. First of all, if it happens, I'm not going to be driving on weekends anyhow. I won't be able to afford to gas drive, so I don't know. I'm not going to do much gas driving think if it happens. Well, I guess if it has to be, it has to be. I really don't know that much about it. Um, my question is, is it really as critical as we're made to believe? This is what I wonder. Convince me of that, and then maybe... You know, I could tell you better how I feel about rationing. What do you think about gas rationing? Well, I don't really like the idea too much at all myself, but if that's the way the president wants to go about cutting our fuel consumption, I guess that's the way we'll just have to do it. Meanwhile, the oil-rich nation of Kuwait announced today that it is boosting the price of oil more than 9%. And the new government of Iran said today that it will resume oil exports next week after a four-month shutdown. Tonight, West Mifflin police are trying to piece together a shooting at a shopping center in that community. Deborah Fox was on the scene. Debbie, that's a strange story. It really is, Don. Details are still sketchy at this point, but we do know this much, that at about 8 o'clock this evening, 46-year-old Richard Striley was critically wounded. Striley was shot in the head as he sat in his car at the West Mifflin Manor Shopping Center. The shooting occurred in front of a barber shop. Police say a station wagon pulled up and one man leaned out of the car and shot Striley. We have uh, several witnesses to the vehicle that uh, the people who did the shooting were in. The vehicle left uh, through this center was behind me and went out uh, towards Duquesne. Uh, we know that the car was a uh, 1971 or 72 Ford station wagon. We know that there's at least two white males in the vehicle. Uh, at what color was the vehicle, sir? The vehicle was yellow with uh, the wood grain sides on it. That's uh, what we have right now. The
No motive has yet been determined, but police have ruled out robbery. In the meantime, police are still looking for two men in a yellow station wagon in connection with tonight's shooting. And 46-year-old Richard Striley remains in critical con condition at Mercy Hospital. Don? Seems like they have a pretty good make in that car, though, the station yes, wagon. Yes, the they do. Car. They okay, do. Okay, Debbie, thank you. You know, it's hard to say how many accidents have been caused by potholes here in the Pittsburgh area. But we know of this one for sure that happened this afternoon on the Parkway East in Wilkinsburg. It involved four cars and a North Braddock school bus. All five vehicles were inbound on the Parkway when the one in front stopped for a pothole. Well, the rest is history. And the school bus driver told us what happened. Uh, well, I'm going down the road this way and uh, this green car here, he's, uh, he's traveling in front of me. And I guess because of these potholes, there's another car in front of him and he slowed down. And uh, this car here, he started sliding. His back end went way over in that lane. And this car here hit into him. The yellow car. Yeah, right. That yellow car hit into him. And then I had no choice. I had to slam on my brakes, and I hit into the back of him. And that's how it ended up. Well, of course, the Parkway East has not cornered the market on potholes here in the Pittsburgh area. This is a very familiar scene throughout the district. Flying wheel covers, front ends knocked out of alignment. The damage to cars and the human psyche is incalculable. But now a new group is being formed. It's called Pothole Victims of Pennsylvania. And the man behind it is Squirrel Hill optometrist, Dr. Martin Krauss. Taxpayers of Pennsylvania would be outraged uh, if they saw new highway construction starting before the other roads and bridges are maintained. I, I, I know I would be infuriated, and I know I might get violent. I don't know. And I, think, I, I just don't think it makes sense. In Harrisburg, the state Senate has approved a bill that would remove the ban on studded tires. The vote was 36 to 13. Before it becomes law, however, the House must approve and the governor must sign it. All of the indicators out of Harrisburg say Governor Thornburg will veto the bill if it reaches his desk. Mike Snyder. Right now, you can get more than interest on your money when you save at Mellon Bank. Because right now, you can get any one of these Timex watches at an exceptionally low price or a travel alarm free. All you have to do is deposit $500 or more in a new or established Mellon Bank savings account. Our offer holds as long as our supply lasts. So why not do it now while the time is right? You get a good feeling for saving at Mellon Bank. Thanks a lot. I just paid my bills with Mellon Bank's payment phone. All it took was a phone call. Uh, they do the paperwork. Oh, you get Mellon Bank's free personal checking, too. And, uh... My money can earn interest compounded daily until the day I use it. The payment phone really pays. Oh, not this much, but you know, it pays. The payment phone from the Mellon Payment Center. This is Mellon Banking. This portion of the Channel 4 Action News has been brought to you by Mellon Bank, which brings you the payment phone from Mellon Payment Center. Bill paying that can pay. This is Mellon Banking. Some guards at Western Penitentiary may have been involved in abuse against inmates. Mike Schneider's been investigating those allegations and uh, has more. Interesting story. We picked up some more on it tonight, by the way, Don. We were tipped off, of course, about the allegations of brutality inside Western Penn earlier today. Warden Jim Howard confirmed to us that he indeed asked the state police to investigate those allegations, and then the state police admitted that they are in the process of doing just that. The probe centers on four to six guards. The small group of guards reportedly broke up an escape attempt on February 17th. Our sources say six inmates were discovered trying to break out through the North Cell block. State police tonight are investigating charges that at least four of those guards took two prisoners to the maximum security area and while the prisoners were still handcuffed, beat them with clubs. According to our sources, three of the guards who were allegedly involved are Jerry Repchak, Mike Halloran, and Frank Browniak. Three other guards are also being probed tonight, but their names are still unknown. Tonight we spoke with Vincent O'Brien, whose union represents the guards. O'Brien says he was aware of the escape attempt, but knew nothing about any prisoner abuse. 
Not to, uh, not to my knowledge. In fact, we were over there. Uh, we went over to the prison, uh, met with Mo, members of the executive board, uh, made a whole review, in, in keeping within the jurisdiction of labor, uh, labor management relationship, and hoped everything uh, would go down smoothly in, in reference to the shakedown. Uh, and that kind of accusation never uh, occurred in any of the dialogue. The alleged victims of the beatings are Jeffrey Coda and Clarence Fierro. Sources say Fierro is serving a life sentence. Coda has a long criminal record. Last year, Coda's girlfriend reportedly slipped him a gun during an ill-fated escape attempt from the county courthouse. It was Coda's mother who instigated the probe when she visited her badly beaten son shortly after the incident. Another guard then reportedly came forward with information about the alleged attack. And Don, by the way, state police have refused to comment about the probe, but they do say they expect to have the entire thing wrapped up sometime this week. The guards allegedly involved have said nothing or will say nothing so far? They won't even confirm that they've been identified as being involved. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Paul? The Welfare Secretary, Helen O'Bannon, says the Welfare Department is facing a serious emergency. Mrs. O'Bannon urged the legislature today to act quickly to make up a $30 million spending deficit. If the money is not appropriated by the first week in March, voters will, be, uh, will not get their paychecks. Very concerned the uh, Senate has the appropriation bill before it now to appropriate a deficit, a deficit appropriation for our county assistance offices. But even if that passes, uh, I'm concerned that the House will not concur and it will go into conference. Uh, we've got an emergency on our hands as of March 6th. And we will, if the matter is not resolved promptly, we will not be able to pay our county assistance workers on March 8th. There has been a big upset in the uh, primary race for mayor of Chicago. Jane Byrne has won over Mayor Michael Belandic, the man who fired her. Mrs. Byrne has uh, more than 50% of the vote with more than three quarters of the votes accounted for. And in Cleveland, Mayor Dennis Kucinich has won a victory as Cleveland voters approved an income tax hike today to help in the financial struggle for that city. The voters also voted to keep the city power plant uh, company. Kucinich had campaigned hard and the voters supported him. Is it possible to contract cancer from low-level radiation sources such as x-rays, uranium mines, or even nuclear power plants? A report released today in Washington says the risks are small, but there is still plenty of room for concern. It says many medical x-rays are unnecessary and exposure to them should be cut down. Doctors, dentists, and hospital technicians flip the switches on their x-ray machines 240 million times a year. Federal officials have said one-third of those x-rays are not needed. This new report says many x-rays are given to protect doctors in the event of medical malpractice suits, to reassure patients, and because Medicaid and Medicare pay for them. This report says there's a strong link between overexposure to x-rays and breast cancer, lung cancer, and leukemia. As for 7 million nuclear and defense workers exposed to low-level radiation on the job, new studies show the incidence of leukemia is several times higher than in the general population. Although none of these studies is conclusive, and I stress that, they do suggest that the incidence of leukemia produced by low levels of radiation may be higher than scientists previously thought. The government also released a report showing twice as much leukemia among those present at atomic test blasts in Utah and Nevada back in the 50s. But this report says preventing unnecessary x-rays is a positive step since x-rays are the greatest source of man-made radiation. Bettina Gregory, ABC News. There was lots of action tonight in the Eastern 8 basketball playoffs. The Dukes lose, but the Panthers win. Bill Hillgrove will check the highlights next on Action News. Two identical prescriptions, same drug, same quantity, but one cost less. Why? Because this one carries a brand name, while this one carries only the chemical or generic name, the exact equivalent but no brand name. Ask your thrift drug pharmacist about generic drugs and how to save up to 50% or more on prescriptions. Remember, the only difference is price. A message in your interest from Thrift Drug, the R experts. Hey, did you play today? Yep, my bowling score. I didn't know they had numbers that low. <laughs> <laughs> did you remember to play today? Our new address, straight. Hey, that pays 500 to one. <laughs> it's seven o'clock. 
Good evening, everyone. It's time for the live drawing of the Daily Number. The Daily Number. It's a big hit. Play today, watch tonight. Great buy. I can have it delivered tomorrow. Great number. I can play it tomorrow. That's it. My new Mazda GLC wasn't the first import I looked at. It was the last, because I found nifty stuff, like a zippy engine that's an absolute tightwad on gas, and front disc brakes, and a split rear seat. Really handy. Plus, I found a bargain, $39.95, hundreds less than a Toyota or a Datsun hatchback. I'm glad I looked at one more car, my GLC. Once you look, you're hooked on Mazda. It's 11 a.m. Do you know where your package is? Emory Express, the small package service that'll get it there before 11 a.m. Flurry of activity in the Eastern 8 playoffs tonight. The Dukes, heartbreak in Morgantown. The Panthers, super game. Yeah, both teams, both uh, Pitt and Duquesne, ran into hot shooting clubs tonight. Yep. So let's, uh, let's take a look at the Eastern 8. The home teams were all the winners tonight in the first round of the Eastern 8 basketball tournament. Here's how it stacks up. West Virginia will likely play, they will play Rutgers, likely the first game Thursday night at the Civic Arena. And Pitt will take on Villanova, likely in the nightcap. The league will officially announce the times of the games tomorrow morning. Well, down at Morgantown tonight with B.B. Flannery in the lineup, the Dukes ran into a hot shooting West Virginia in the first half. The Mountaineers piled up a 15-point lead by shooting 77% from the floor. They led 35-20 at halftime and won the ball game 73-59. The closest the Dukes could get in the second half was within seven points. B.B. Flannery held to 10 points every time he touched the ball. The crowd of 9,600-plus would boo. Uh, the high man for Duquesne, 13 points by John Moore but the West Virginia Mountaineers tonight were led by Greg Nance, a career high of 20 points. Three other players in double figures, Lowe's Moore, Dana Perno, and Junius Lewis all had 14. The Mountaineers won it by the final, as you see it on the scoreboard, 73-59 to over the Dukes. The Mountaineers will play Rutgers in the first game Thursday night at the Civic Arena in all likelihood. Well, the Pitt Panthers tonight had to survive a red-hot shooting Colonial Club uh, to emerge victorious at the Fieldhouse. It was Pitt 85, George Washington 80. The game went down to the final seconds. The Panthers tonight were sparked by their front line. It was Terry Knight, 21 points, Sam Clancy, 20 points and 10 rebounds, Sammy Ellis, 20 points and 9 rebounds. When you get... 61 points from your front line, you're probably going to win the basketball game. However, the heroics at the end, as the Panthers needed a couple of good jump shots from Pete Strickland, went to the senior from Rockville, Maryland, who put on a television show for the folks back home in the Washington, D.C. area. Uh, Strickland had 10 points in the game, five assists. He made four of six shots, and he hit the foul shots at the end. There's the slam jam to Clancy from Strickland, the fine assist from Pete on the alley-oop. Clancy was a house on fire in the first half, scoring 16 points and to grab the uh, uh, game rebound honors. Uh, George Washington was led by big center Mike Zagardo, 19 points. Mike Sampson, 16 points. Brian Maggot had 15 points, but 13 of those in the first half. The Panthers were able to shut Maggot, a sharpshooting guard, down in the second. For the game, George Washington shot 62% from the floor. The Panthers shot a pretty good 57%. And as we take a look at the scoreboard tonight, first round of the Eastern Eight at the Fieldhouse before 4,255. It was Pitt 85 and George Washington 80. In other action, in overtime, Villanova downed UMass 78-73. In other action, Rutgers outlasting Penn State 67-57. So there you have the Eastern 8-4 tonight. In other area games, Point Park loser tonight. It was Westminster 70, the Pioneers 68. And in three overtimes, St. Vincent 78, Grove City 76. Top-ranked Indiana State tonight, downing West Texas State 94 to 84. In other action, the Big 8 tournament, Oklahoma 77, Colorado 57. It was Missouri 92, Oklahoma State 70. Kansas tonight downing Iowa State 91 to 70. Kansas State 61, Nebraska 60. In high school basketball at the Civic Arena in WPIAL action, it was Burrow 70, Butler 41. Valley tonight defeats West Mifflin North 86-65. Bill Varner poured in 36 
for the Valley Vikings. In hockey, although the Pens have slipped to third place behind the Los Angeles Kings, they can recapture second place with a victory over the Colorado Rockies tomorrow night at the Civic Arena. Penguin defenseman Randy Carlisle has been having a scoring field day lately uh, with two goals and ten assists in the last nine games. Carlisle says it's a matter of getting the shots. Well, I think I got lucky more than anything else. Uh, I've had a lot of shots lately in, say, the last three or four games. One game I had seven and uh, six, and I think the other night I had nine. So once you keep shooting the puck, well, something's got to break for you. And that's, I think it's just basically uh, just a, a lot of averages works out that way. When you work in practice like you did today, uh, what, what do you personally work on? Well, I found it tough sledding today. I don't know. Some days you have it, some days you don't. Uh, you just go out there and it's tough getting warmed up in this rink. It's colder here than, uh, say, the Civic Arena. So you have to do more. You have to work a little harder at getting warmed up. But once you get warmed up, things seem to start to come together. And you, you, what I try to do is just try to pick the corner, shooting the puck, and try to make the right, right play all the time. I don't want to get any bad habits in practice because then you get bad habits in the game and it can cost you. Hockey scoreboard tonight, the Rockies could prove tough. They snapped a 10-game losing streak by downing Boston 4-2. New York Islanders tonight over Montreal 7-3, another surprise. And in progress, third period now, St. Louis is out in front of the Rangers by a score of 4-1, and that is the sports scene. The Rockies have been playing lousy the last week or so, and I was hoping they'd come in here tomorrow night and play lousy, but it doesn't look like they will. Well, in a way, the streak is snapped now, so, you know, it's like, a, what does uh, the gunner call it? Hidden vigorous. Or Hidden whatever. vigorous or yes, something like that. I know him well. <laughs> hey, Bill, thank you. <laughs> The winning number drawn tonight in the Pennsylvania Daily Lottery is 778. That's 778. The little round person says we will have weather tomorrow and it's going to be nice. We'll check the forecast next on Action News. Judy, got a surprise for you. Yes, Will. Crunch and munch. Crunch and munch? Nuts! Yes, and popcorn, too. Taste that candy coating. It's not caramel. Not a sugary glaze. That's rich, sweet, buttery. Buttery? That's toffee! That's popcorn and peanuts and toffee with real butter. I like crunch and munch. Like? Well, it's hard to say love right away. Ship and Shore brings you the fashion news for spring. New length tunics in Kiana over narrow pants. Easy, elegant two-piece Kiana dressing in beautiful prints and solids. And here, Ship and Shore says go sheer. Slip into the sheer prettiness of Ship and Shore's filmy new crepe tops. Ship and Shore Kiana and Ship and Shore Shears. What wonderful ways to look. Come see the Ship and Shore collection at Kaufman's. Help, Elaine! Help, Elaine. Lunch. Half a cup of cottage cheese. Help, Elaine. Elaine Powers. If you're not having much luck going it alone, ask Elaine for the help you need. Encouragement. Planned for you exercises. Ideas on how eating, not starving, can help you lose. The help every woman needs to look better, feel better, at a price every woman can afford. Uh -huh. Elaine Powers Figure Salons. Call now for a free salon tour. The only good thing about winter is the midwinter sale at today's home. Our entire stock of Drexel Heritage Furniture Reduce saved 15 to 25 percent on individual pieces and room groupings. And that includes special orders placed now. We've reduced everything except our service, and that's 100 percent for you. You supply the home. We'll supply Drexel Heritage Furnishings at savings during our midwinter sale. This is today's home. Well, Donardo's getting ready to come on like a lion, so I guess you yeah. should growl, Mr. Donardo. Well, get your whip out there, Clyde, and I may just do that, all right? All right. We've got, uh, we've got some fairly good weather. In fact, we had a lovely afternoon after the cloud cover this morning. Quite a bit of sunshine this afternoon, and it was uh, pretty decent around the area. Temperatures were slightly above the normal. Our low this morning, International Airport, was 27 degrees. High this afternoon, 40. Normals for this time of year, 24 and 40. That put us one and one half degree above normal and currently at an international airport sky condition is reported as clear 
Visibility is 10 miles. Temperature 29 degrees. Relative humidity is 96 percent. Wind southwest 5 miles per hour. And a barometer 30.16 inches and it's steady. Air quality around the area tonight is fairly good. Uh, only one station in the uh, moderate range. That's the high station is downtown. Carbon monoxide. PSI is 86. Moderate range in the low station is Logan's Ferry, particulate, PSI 24, that's in a good range. We'll have a little change in the air quality overnight and uh, through uh, tomorrow morning. On the uh, satellite photograph tonight, this uh, ridge of high pressure is providing clear skies through uh, most of the New England states, with the exception of Maine. A little bit of activity up through the uh, northeastern New England states. And then once you get on southwestern New York State, down through Pennsylvania, Ohio, West Virginia, and mostly uh, most of Kentucky and the Tennessee area along the southeast Atlantic coast states, just beautiful weather. Now we have this next storm beginning to develop. The uh, low pressure center is actually located in the Oklahoma, Texas panhandle area in a warm frontal system on southeast through New Orleans. This is now starting to generate some cloud cover and moisture coming in off the Gulf. This storm center is moving on off to the east and eventually will move northeastward. And as a result, we will have uh, some more precipitation coming into the area. Further out in the Pacific, in the southwestern sections, skies are uh, generally clear and temperatures are a little uh, warmer through that area. In fact, uh, our low in the nation was uh, up in the Minnesota area today. It only got down to zero this morning. So you can see the situation is changing on our national map. Still quite a bit of cold Arctic air up through uh, Canada, but from the border on south, uh, not too much of an extreme uh, cold condition. It looks as though through the rest of the entire week, we're going to be running normal to above normal weather. Doesn't look like we're going to have any severe cold outbreaks this week. And if we can take that through to next week, we'll be in almost to the middle of March, and then things have got to get better and start gradually warming up. I think our major problem from now through the end of winter is snowfall here in Pittsburgh. High pressure center is now located over West Virginia. That is providing the clear skies through our area and westward. Actually, the uh, good cloud cover lines on about uh, Indiana, Illinois border, western Kentucky, western Tennessee, and west. Right now, precipitation in the form of rain through the southeast, moving on northwestward up through the uh, Kansas, Nebraska border. North of that, it's all snow. That's moving eastward. Looks like all we have to worry about is rain. Tonight, under the influence of that high, our forecast fair on a cold side. Overnight low dropping off to 25 degrees. Although we do have northwesterly flow in our area now, just west of us, it's southwest. We're going to start getting warmer air. This moisture will be coming up from the Gulf and the low moving on into our area. So by tomorrow night, the low in the Oklahoma and uh, Texas panhandle would have moved up in through southeastern Illinois. Rain as far east as about Zanesville, Ohio, coming up on Parkersburg, southern West Virginia. But during the daylight hours, we're still going to be under the influence of this high. Wednesday, it's going to be beautiful. Beautiful sunshine during the morning hours, increasing cloudiness and warmer in the afternoon. Tomorrow's high 47, no rain until after midnight tomorrow night. Thursday's a rain day, cloudy, mild rain and a high of 45 degrees. Tonight, cold 25, Wednesday warmer, plenty of sunshine 47. Rain coming in late tomorrow night. Thursday's a rain day, 45 degrees under cloudy skies with rain. Looks like Friday will get back down to normal temperatures, not even below normal. Gentlemen, the weather is certainly improving. I like normal. So do I. Zippity Duda, mm. as they say. Mm. Sort of, it's an old movie. Yes. Other news tonight, Israeli Prime Minister Menachem Begin has backed down from an earlier refusal. He now says he will come to this country and discuss the deadlock Middle East peace talks with President Carter. Mr. Begin will come probably on Thursday. Police in the nation's capital have given protesting farmers until midnight tomorrow to vacate the mall near the Washington Monument. They've been camped there for the past three weeks. And Mobile Oil Company announced today it will start allocating gasoline to all of its customers beginning this weekend. Paul? And finally, in Narragansett, Rhode Island, the local tax collector refused last week to take a check from Paul Southland for his taxes. Today, Southland showed up again, this time with cash. He plunked down a bucket full of pennies, 12,016 of them. He re received a receipt for the taxes that he paid on that occasion. The receipt read, one pail of pennies, not counted by the town at this time. So stay tuned now for the Tuesday movie of the week. That's coming up very soon now. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>
Channel 4 Action News is a presentation of WTAE TV News. If you must walk through dark streets and areas, please take along a companion for safety.